life is very much a moment to moment affair. And if we lose focus of those moments or use those moments in an inefficient, insufficient or ordinary way, what would be the difference between living and not living in the first place? We may be walking, we may be traveling, but living isn't just merely moving in a vegetative state. That we also have a certain time, we have a certain expiry. And so that means what? It means that the time to start actually doing the things that we've been putting off or procrastinating for so many days, so many months, so many years, now's the time to start seriously considering actually doing it and engaging in those things. If you have someone who you love, now's the time to start showing and increasing that appreciation and affection and expression for the love you have for that person. Often we hold on to petty conflicts and just petty negative emotions towards each other. And often the negative emotions we hold towards each other are to the people who are closest to us. So if we don't actually, if we can't guarantee when we're gonna go, don't we think that's about time? Or is now the time, a good time, to let them know how much we love them? To let them know how much we appreciate them? Or to apologize to them if there's something we did to them, we transgressed them in some way? Because really, we can't guarantee that we'll get that same opportunity or same chance tomorrow. One of the ancient teachings is that however many millions of dollars you have, you can't use a single cent to buy back even a single moment of time. So in one sense, time is even more precious than money. So how we use our time, how we're using our time is very much indicates where we're at in life. What would you actually do if you had 24 hours left to live? If what you're doing now is what you'd be doing if you had 24 hours left to live, you're on the money. You've hit the jackpot. You're doing exactly what you'd be doing if you were gonna leave the next day. But if you're not doing what you'd be doing if you had 24 hours left to live, what are we doing? What is it about you that could stop you from achieving that thing? What is it about you? What is an obstacle that you have or face that could stop you achieving that thing by the end of the year? They said that we have a lot of to-do lists, but not enough to-be lists. There's a, there's a, a trap, sometimes used in South America, maybe other places, and it's called the Kumbhaka. And the basic idea is this, that what happens is when you put a banana within like a box, the idea is that a monkey will come along, detect or see that banana, put his hand into the box, reach for the banana, but the hole or the entry hole for the box is actually not big enough to take the banana out with the monkey's hand. And so the monkey helplessly is trapped because he won't let go of the banana. And so in a sense, the hunter that comes to catch the monkey is like time. We're like the monkey and the banana are like our attachments that are holding us back in life. And so sometimes we just helplessly hold on to our expectations or we may hold on to the banana of ego. Somehow or other, everybody has their own banana. But we know what we're attached to. We know what we're attached to. We know the particular types of things that we're holding on to, which is actually stopping or slowing us. And so if we just helplessly hold on to like our attachment to fame, our attachment to our money, our attachment to our travel, our attachment to our home, our attachment to our car, our attachment to our location, our attachment to our ex. Sometimes we hold on to things that don't even exist. So sometimes we do that. We're so attached to our past and so attached to things that don't exist that we may be driving our lives now looking in the rearview mirror. You only start really living or actually really start getting something out of life as soon as you're in the present. We may use the past and learn from the past, learn from our mistakes. Everybody has to take birth, get disease, grow old and die. And so what happens is this race or this gateway between birth and death, that's called life. And unfortunately, some people have, but if they're not really utilizing their life to their, they're not really living. They're just like a statistic. They're just another 20, one of the 23 million. And we don't want to be a person who, it's like when you put a hand, your hand into a bucket full of water and the water rises and you take your hand out of the bucket and the water goes down. We don't want to just be someone who just populates the earth 
And then when we die, we just unpopulate the earth. If you can really transform your own life, go for it. If you can transform the life of you and your partner, go for it. If you can transform the life of you, your partner and your family, go for it. If you can transform the life of you, your partner, your family, and perhaps even your borough or your location, your district, go ahead, you know, your town, go ahead, your city, go ahead. The entire world. So we have a lot of information and little transformation. But what happened is in some levels of Super Mario, there was this really sort of like disastrous apocalyptic level where you'd actually, the screen would be moving. And so what happened is if you weren't fast enough, that screen would just push you over the edge. And so it's a little bit like that. Time is like that, it's pushing us. And if we don't properly circumnavigate our lives and the obstacles in our lives in a proper fashion, all we're gonna do is just drop off the edge and die. We said the life expectancy 75, but we have to spend about 25 years sleeping. So that life expectancy figure is in one sense, it doesn't represent the maneuverability life expectancy. It represents the duration, but it doesn't represent the certain maneuverability or flexibility we have in life. And we spend an average of about 12 or 13 years of our work. It's been like an average of about six years looking at watching t TV, or about two years just looking at commercials that we spend about six months of our lifetime looking for lost items. So when it comes to actually our maneuverability in life, you know, our sort of like choice time, it's actually very limited. It's not 75 years or, or as we're saying, so many years, it's very limited. So that puts even more emphasis on what we do with our time, how we choose to use it. If there's something you need to do, go out and do it. Because your maneuverability, your flex time, your flexibility time, your luxury time is very small, it's very limited. We are exposed to so many influences Everybody has an idea of how we should live our lives, but it does not necessarily mean that we're headed in the right direction. We have various pleasures that pertain to the body or the physical body. We have certain physical stimuli stimulation. We have various pleasures that pertain to the mind, but the Bhagavad Gita and the Vedic literatures explain the best type of pleasure and the lasting pleasure and the type of pleasure that we should be trying to seek as spiritual entities or individuals is that which pertains to the soul. And one of the primary or key ways of actually being able to connect with the soul or pleasure with the soul is through music through sound vibration if a daughter is constantly told from one years old you're ugly you're ugly you're good for nothing you're not going to make anything of yourself what is she going to grow up and think her self-esteem is going to be terrible why because that sound vibration has a particular effect on a mentality and a particular effect on a consciousness so if Someone saying you're not you're good for nothing has an effect. Or someone really encouraging and say, hey, you know, cat, you know, go for it, you know, rare sunshine, you know, just do it. Do what you love and encourages you. Imagine the effects that spiritual sound vibration will have on your consciousness, have on your life, and have on your existence. And so the Bhagavad Gita mentions that this is the difference between existing and living. We can add a spiritual dimension, a spiritual flavor, so that the things that we like doing, whether that's teaching, working, that's trading leading, doing yoga, etc. is tinged and enriched with a spiritual touch, a spiritual flavor, and that can actually leave us lastingly happy. And by the time we get to the end of our time, we can guarantee, or at least the Bhagavad Gita guarantees, that you would have lived a life completely free from regret.